If you are one of those looking to cut the Adobe Cord or perhaps do the opposite, switch from your current editor to Adobe, stick around as we're going to be comparing Photoshop and Affinity Photo for the iPad. What are the important differences and similarities between these two apps? What should you choose? That's what we're going to be answering in today's video. Let's start off with raw editing. Both Photoshop and Affinity Photo are capable raw editors. Let's perform some actual editing to better understand the differences and similarities between each editor. Let's start off with Photoshop. I'll select the photo from iCloud Drive. Since the photo is in RAW, Photoshop automatically has taken me to its RAW editing module. I'll increase the exposure and the shadows and I'll reduce the highlights. I'll increase the clarity and the sharpening. One advantage of Photoshop over Affinity is the availability of a dehaze slider and an HSL tool built right into its raw editor. So that was Photoshop. Let's move on to Affinity. Similar to Photoshop, Affinity supports opening the file from iCloud Drive. As in Photoshop, since the file is a raw file, Affinity automatically opens the file in its raw editing module develop persona. I'll increase the exposure, then the shadows. I'll reduce the highlights. I'll increase the clarity. I'll sharpen the image. As you have seen, Affinity offers solid raw editing comparable with Photoshop. It, however, is missing the haze and HSL adjustments in this module. Next, let's move on to selections. As I'm done with raw editing, I'll tap import as, then import as a layer. Both Photoshop and Affinity offer powerful selection tools. To demonstrate, let's replace the background in this image. To do so, I need to select the foreground. I'll use Photoshop's Quick Selection Brush. It's a brush with built-in edge detection. As you can see, it is highly precise. The main advantage of Photoshop, though, over Affinity, is its object selection tool, which allows for accurate selections to be made, reducing the need for tedious brushing. Let's use that. I'll click Object Selection. I'll drag a rectangle around the object. As you can see, an instant selection was made with just one step. This tool is not perfect though. As you can see, when the edges are not clear, both the object selection tool and the quick selection tool will fail. Next, let's move on to Affinity. As I'm done raw editing, I'll click the check mark. Next, I'll select the foreground. The best tool for that purpose is the selection brush, which works similar to Photoshop's quick selection tool. Let's use that. As you can see, the selection brush is extremely accurate in detecting the edges. That's good to know as Affinity has no AI object selection to fall back on as an alternative. One advantage Affinity has over Photoshop though is its polygonal selection tool. This is a tool which strangely Photoshop for the iPad lacks. As you can see, this tool gives full manual control over the selection process and is extremely useful in cases such as in this image where edges are not distinct enough for AI or automatic detection. So that was selections. Let's move on to masking. Both Photoshop and Affinity Photo support non-destructive editing via masking. To create a mask from a selection, simply tap the mask button. 
There, the background is removed. Notice that the mask appears in the widget. Let's add a new background. I'll tap the Add button. I'll tap Files. I'll choose the image. I'll move the background below the initial image. I'll size the background. There, that's the final edit. Now let's do the same with Affinity Photo. I'll tap the plus button. I'll tap mask layer. There, the mask is created which removes the background. I'll add a new background to replace it. First, I'll remove the selection by deselecting. Next, I'll go out of Affinity to the Files app to copy the background. Next, I'll navigate back to Affinity and paste the photo. I'll move the background image below the initial image. I'll size the background. And there you go, Affinity's Edit, which is pretty much the same as Photoshop. Next, let's move on to some other advantages when it comes to masking. Photoshop beats Affinity in its ability to remove a background with one tap using AI. To do that, simply click the Selection Tools, click Remove Background. To do the same thing with Affinity, you would have to manually select the subject via brushing, for complex edges, you can use the Refine Brush to improve the selection. While the lack of AI masking is a limitation, Affinity has an advantage over Photoshop in its support for luminosity masking, which is a great way to target complex areas based on brightness. Here I am using it to perform a local adjustment on the underexposed areas in the image. So that was masking. Let's move on to generative AI. The biggest advantage of Photoshop over Affinity is its integrated generative AI tools. Let's demonstrate by adding a weather balloon to this image. To add an image via text prompt, all you need to do is add a selection, type the text. Photoshop will take care of not just creating the image, but also ensuring that it blends well with its surroundings. To do the same thing in Affinity, you will need to avail of a third-party service. I'll use the free tier of Leonardo.ai, which I've talked about in another video. I'll type weather balloon in the prompt. I'll download the image. I'll copy and paste the image in Affinity. Unfortunately, the image still has a background which needs to be removed. I'll mask out the background. There, the final image. While some more tedious process for sure, the result is essentially the same as Photoshop's. In addition to integrated text to image, Photoshop for the iPad also supports generative expand and generative remove which expands the scene and removes difficult objects, respectively. So there you have it, a quick comparison between two powerful tools, Photoshop and Affinity Photo. What is the bottom line? Despite the wide pricing gap, Affinity Photo actually has a very similar feature set to Photoshop and can get the job done, albeit with more manual effort and time spent than Photoshop. It also has some tools like luminosity masking, polygonal selection, HDR merging, and panorama stitching, which Photoshop lacks. That being said, Photoshop's AI tools genuinely save time, and its generative AI is certainly a differentiating feature among photo editors. However, here is a more specific recommendation. Choose Photoshop if you find its AI tools, such as object selection, Generative AI, Remove Background, really useful for your workflow. 
And of course, if you don't mind, it's subscription-based pricing. Choose Affinity Photo for the iPad. If you don't care for generative AI, don't mind the manual selection process and prefer to pay a substantially lower cost for your editing. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know which one you prefer, Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.